I rather feel like I'm the alpha and the omega in the sense I was the person that started it all off and it went undering down there and then the amount of feedback that I've got, so it's all come bouncing back to me and I'm sitting here in absolute awe of the knowledge and abilities to analyze the information for my fellow panel members and I'm sitting here thinking, oh my God, what am I doing here? <laughs> but what I would like to just very quickly say is that one of the, th the words that hasn't been used in the discussion so far is the word perception. So we've discussed about intelligence and we've discussed all these various things, but we're not talking about the, the individual realization that you are conscious and that you're perceiving around you. And I was particularly interested in what Adam was saying about the pair experiment. And of course, the, the wonderful example, and I, I'm delighted to see that you were involved in that, and I need to talk to you about that, because it's something that's fascinated me for many years, is that, as I recall, one of the issues with the experiment was the, the gambler's fallacy, and the idea was that the longer that the person was sitting in front of the screen seeing nice pictures, more nice pictures they saw, they anticipated the fact that statistically the chances are that the next picture is going to be more likely to be awful. And it was that that was actually affecting the skin conductance because you were getting more and more nervous of the fact, I know that the next picture is going to be horrible because the last five haven't been. And I was then, that made me think, and then we're thinking about how we're using artificial intelligence in there with this way. And I think it was a wonderful idea to actually use artificial intelligence to actually analyze and see whether artificial intelligence could be precognitive. And I thought, that is the most amazing thing I think I've ever heard. And what a brilliant idea. And then I thought, but then again, artificial intelligence doesn't have, and this is the problem, isn't it, the substrate problem. Does artificial intelligence have a sense of self? And if artificial intelligence doesn't have a sense of self, that in fact means that it can't anticipate and worry about the fact that the next picture is going to scur it because it's not self-reflecting on the fact that the next picture is going to scur it. And I then started thinking, you know, I started struggling and then thinking, there's so many ideas that spin out of that. And I suddenly thought, I'm having problems now in being able to verbalize what I'm thinking about. And I thought, that's the major problem we have. We are restricted by our language. We are restricted by the way we use words. And of course, going back to arrival, one of the most wonderful things I liked about Arrival was the application of um, a particular model that I first came across in my university years in the early 1970s, the Saper Wharf hypothesis. And I was delighted to see that that was being used in that way, which is language and how lang what language means. And I think we are in very exciting times and we're in very, very dangerous times at the same time. So coming back to the Alpha and Omega, I'd like to finish with my starting point of the fact that it seems that we are in this incredibly interesting period and time. But as a friend of mine said recently, that it is both a curse and an advantage and a wonderful thing to live in dangerous times. And I just sense that we are living in very dangerous times. And I think the decisions we will make over the next two years or so are going to have profound implications for probably the future of humanity. Thank you.